Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 599. Erythrocytosis from testosterone therapy does not cause heart disease or strokes. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today, I am going to talk to the men in the audience who are thinking about um, having their testosterone um, replaced because they are no longer making enough of that, Uh, but also to the men who are having their testosterone replaced and have the side effect of uh, making too many red blood cells. This This is a very common problem with testosterone replacement. And it's much more common in a replacement that is um, injectables, like the um, uh, testosterone cyprinate or the long-acting testosterone shots that you get every uh, two to three weeks. Uh, but it's not as common in pellets. So in, in shots they, where you get your testosterone from, from a, an IM injection, the side effect of having too many red cells is about 50%. 50% of the men have too many red blood cells, or over and above what the lab considers to be normal. Um, for pellets, it's, it's more like 25%. And, but it's still something I have to deal with all the time, and so do my staff. And it's hard to explain what we call erythrocytosis. Erythro means red cell. Cytosis means too many, or high levels of. And that's partially because um, other doctors have made them aware of their uh, high levels of uh, hemoglobin and hematocrit, the two red blood cell tests, and to their, their red blood cell count is high. And they've said, oh, this is, this is terrible. You're going to have to, you know, you're at risk for stroke or heart disease or heart attack. But this is, it's very misleading and very confusing. And so it is something that was discussed at the conference I just uh, came home from. Dr. Rousier, R-O-U-Z-I-E-R, gave a very good talk with tons of references that shows that having erythrocytosis or high red cells is not the cause of heart disease or stroke. The only thing that the the disease that is confused with it is called polycythemia vera, which is a completely different disease, which uh, looks on the lab like too many red cells, too many uh, platelets, and too many white cells. All the cell levels are high. So you can look at a CBC or a blood count, and you can tell whether somebody has erythrocytosis or polycythemia vera. Now, polycythemia vera is uh, very not very rare, but rare, and oftentimes physicians will put them together as one illness, and they are not. Polycythemia vera happens because there is a genetic problem in the JAK, J-A-K-2 um, gene, and if you have this mutation, then your platelets don't work very well. You get a lot of platelets, but they don't, they they get hyper sticky, they're hypercoagulable. And if that's the case, then you end up getting clots and heart, heart attacks and possibly strokes. So that one problem has bled over to cover erythrocytosis, which is not true. They, they are not the same problem. One is platelets and erythrocytosis is just too many red cells. So in, in describing this in literature, oftentimes they're lumped together and they are both considered scary to doctors. So oftentimes doctors won't operate on you if your hemoglobin is higher than um, 
17 and your hematocrit is higher than 50. They consider that dangerous. However, there are tons of, of articles and research papers that show that erythrocytosis alone, coming from testosterone, is not the cause of heart disease or stroke. Therefore, you have to you have to not be confused with this, and you have to help your doctor uh, look at the difference. Because sometimes, if you're taking testosterone and your and your blood count is up, you will be denied surgery until you have a, a series of phlebotomies. Now, in many cases, having a series of phlebotomies uh, is is good. If you have um, if you have polycythemia vera, you have to have those to get off all the extra cells. So that gets rid of some of the white cells, some of the red cells, and some of the platelets. And that benefits that illness. Um, if you have erythrocytosis, however, there are certain circumstances that we don't want to remove your blood uh, if you have them. And one of them is if you live at high altitudes. If you live at a high altitude, you make a lot more red blood cells, and your hematocrit is well above 50 if you are at 7,000, I believe, and above. So I think it's even lower than that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but a high altitude, say Denver, is going to give you a higher red count because you need that to survive. You need more red cells to carry this thin air, thin oxygen, lower oxygen uh, tension to your cells. So it is, it is an adaptation to your circumstances. And many people who live at high altitudes do just fine with a hematocrit of 60 or 65. They don't get blood clots, they don't get strokes, they don't have heart attacks from this. This is something that is basically an adaptation that keeps them alive and keeps them able to exercise and able to walk and able to do um, uh, some things at the gym, get on the treadmill, that type of thing. That's one type of person that should not have their blood dumped. Another um, patient uh, category would be patients who have COPD or lung disease where they are not um, absorbing or, excuse me, yeah, absorbing and, and transmitting as much O2 through their bloodstream to the cells because their lungs, lungs are made up of like, they look like hollow grapes and all of those surface areas are, are absorbing um, oxygen that you breathe in and then transmitting it to the red cells that, that uh, circulate by it. But if you have COPD, those little grapes have turned into like big empty uh, grapefruits with less surface area, so you don't get as much oxygen to give to, uh, to your red cells. So you need more red cells to pick up more oxygen out of the low oxygen that you are being given because of your lungs. Somebody who has COPD and has a blood count of, say, a hematocrit of 55, don't take away their blood. Don't dump their blood because then they're not going to be able to, they'll be out of breath all the time. Then, then you'll have a problem. They have adapted to their low oxygen environment because of their lungs by making more red blood cells. So it is not an answer to that. In fact, it should not be done in people who have chronic bronchitis and uh, sometimes asthma, oftentimes uh, smoker's lung or, or COPD. So in those people, it doesn't cause heart attacks, it doesn't cause strokes. I mean, it's, it's, that's a good example of why we, you know, why we shouldn't re recommend that all patients have their hem hematocrit less than 50. Um, and last but not least, if you're an extreme athlete and you require all the oxygen for your body, oftentimes your counts will go up because you need more oxygen to pick up from your lungs to go to your tissues. You're using more oxygen than the average person. So you need more red cells, and that's often common. And often when we draw that uh, blood out, either for donation or to or to dump it if we're not able to uh, give it to patients, then the extreme athlete has trouble being an extreme athlete. So you have to kind of look at all those different things about yourself and about, if you're a doctor, about your patients. You don't want to be getting their blood counts down 
I mean, the best answer is hydrate, and they do, and they hydrate as they're exercising. But hydrate and make sure that your blood volume doesn't constrict, doesn't uh, become, your blood doesn't become thicker just because you're not drinking enough water. Uh, but if you have these different health conditions, you should keep your blood counts higher than other people. Now, if it doesn't cause problems, if having a high red count does not cause problems for these particular people, patients to me, but depending on your circumstance, I may be talking about you, then why are we causing patients to be miserable by having to come in and dump blood all the time? Well, to make a decision about that and to be safe, you'd have to decide who has polycythemia vera versus who has erythrocytosis. If somebody has polycythemia vera, then they need to be taken care of by an oncologist and, and a heme onc doctor. They take care of hematology and oncology. And they need to be uh, have their blood drawn off at certain times to get to a certain level for to be safe so that they don't have clots. They may even need to be um, on a blood thinner of some kind so that they, their platelets that don't, that are too sticky, don't make clots. Um, for our patients, we generally will remove blood for erythrocytosis patients. They're usually men, they're usually on testosterone, um, and we are, we are trying to get their hematocrit less than 50, but some people it's hard to do that. It's hard to get them uh, down below 50, but we've not had anybody have um, a heart attack or stroke because of their blood counts. We do actively try to do this um, blood dump or donation um, because more for anything else, more than anything else, for the primary care doctors, don't make them afraid of taking testosterone. So we're trying to keep them at a lower level, which isn't a, isn't a bad idea. And some people who have erythrocytosis feel lighter and better when they uh, have some blood removed, but. Other people, when you remove their blood, feel terrible when you remove their blood because they're tired, they don't have enough oxygen carrying capacity. They're, you know, they may be have uh, COPD and not know it. They may have smoker's damage to their lungs. They may still be smoking and not telling you. And therefore, they can't tolerate a lower blood count. They are doing this as an adaptation so that they can live well. So. I guess the answer is don't be afraid if your count's above 50, but oftentimes we will try to get your hematocrit less than that. We want to make sure that you don't have any of these other issues that could cause problems if we do remove your blood. And last but not least, if you're over 70 and you have a high count, that is not a higher risk for having heart disease or stroke, but I mean, in general, you have that risk anyway just because of age. However, this does not make it worse, does not increase your risk. And we can't take off a large volume of blood on patients who are over 70 at one time because often it makes you high, it makes your blood pressure drop. You don't have as much um, control for alterations in uh, blood volume as you might have had when you were 50. And it can make you dizzy, pass out, extremely sleepy, tired for several weeks. So we try to make sure that someone who hasn't given blood ever uh, and who is over 70 or has, hasn't given blood since they were 70, that we watch them and that we make sure we don't take off too much blood. So lots of things to think about here. One is don't be afraid. And if you have high white count, red count, and platelets, then you need to see a hematologist and have that diagnosed, or you need to have a test called the JAK2 the Jack genetic test. Um, and the difference between polycythemia vera and erythrocytosis is erythrocytosis is a reaction. It is not a genetic problem. Even if it says familial erythrocytosis, it's not a genetic mutation. Polycythemia vera is. Uh, erythrocytosis is just the red cells being high, no other cells being high, and polycythemia vera is the whole product of your bone marrow is high. Um, 
You don't have that excessive clotting with red cells. You do with high platelets, which is in polycythemia vera. The um, treatment for polycythemia vera is to get your, your hematocrit down below 50. Um, and the treatment for erythrocytosis, especially if you have one of those um, mitigating problems, is to do nothing. And if you don't, is to uh, drop, your, drop your blood by donation or by phlebotomy so that basically we're doing it for other doctors, which is, sounds crazy. But we're also doing it because it is confused by everyone. Even the CPT codes for polycythemia vera is the same as the CPT code for erythrocytosis, even though they're different diseases. So everyone seems to be confused. And um, I don't view erythrocytosis as life and, a life and death problem. So take a deep breath if you have this. If, you, if your doctor's wanting you to get your blood drawn, make sure you don't have one of those problems, the, the COPD or lung problems, the high altitude problems, um, or you're a smoker or you're an extreme athlete. Any of those problems can cause a natural response to your, from your bone marrow to increase your red cells so you can carry oxygen around. That's not something you need to have your blood drawn for. But if you don't have any of those problems and do have uh, high red counts from your testosterone, then you can get a phlebotomy or you can wait on it. We can just see how high it goes and if it stabilizes. And if it does and you have no problems, then we don't find that to be a problem either. This is new information. Dr. Rousier is... Um, He's an expert in many things, and he's an expert in testosterone um, prescribing for men. And he's done a complete search of the literature, and this is what he found. So thank you for listening. Take a deep breath. Fear doesn't help anything. And you should, you should remember that this is not going to harm you. I'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.